because this industry is a very serious place with very uh, serious amounts of value. And security is the assumption under which uh, people are looking at it and thinking about using it. And when security isn't provided, whether that's from some structural set of decisions, like how some entity uh, works as an exchange and then it wasn't solvent, or whether it's because of a hack uh, where, where value was stolen from a bridge somewhere, or whether it's a manipulation of some, some data oracle other than Chainlink where the protocols get to money taken from them. All of these things diminish people's uh, faith in the overall reliability of our industry, whether it's uh, exchange failures like FTX, whether it's hacks of bridges, uh, whether it's um, any number of other failures. If our industry is not able to generate infrastructure that creates real security, real 24-7, 365 uptime reliability guarantees, then real value will not move into the industry. Real value will stay in the current systems that are less efficient, but uh, provide uh, proven reliability and some amount of proven security. Security is really what our industry is based on. And the developers that value it, in my experience, tend to exist for extended periods of time. Our goal in building Chainlink uh, with the community and, and into a larger ecosystem is that we all have a serious view of security and can create an infrastructure that can allow developers to rely on that security to create a reliable, secure application. And there are plenty of teams out there that generate systems that are not secure, make a website, you know, they say they're decentralized, but really they have one or two nodes, one or two servers. I don't understand how that's decentralized, especially if there's the same key holder controlling both servers. Um, some of them, like a good example is the previous multi-chain thing where the, the whole set of bridges was uh, turned off because all 20 something nodes were controlled by a key in a single laptop. All of these things um, don't really work. And they don't create the security and reliability that we want people to see in our industry. And each one of these setbacks, whether it's a FTX related structural issue of how an exchange works or whether it's a hack of a bridge, all of these issues set the industry back. So that's not, that's just not what it's all about, frankly. Uh, it's, it's hard to make security. And so a lot of other people who don't know how to make security, they've never made security. They have developers that don't have PhDs in cryptography. These developers used to build iPhone applications or they used to build e-commerce websites where security wasn't a problem because all they had to do was connect to SSL and you know a payments processor which handled all of it for them and that's it. I mean, for people that don't know what they don't know, the world's a simple place where they don't have to worry about a lot of stuff. But for people that know how security works and how reliability works, because their systems have processed trillions of dollars, the way Chainlink has processed over $9 trillion, they are worried and they are inclined not to screw around with, with the security and reliability guarantees of those systems. Security and reliability does take time. Building a system that just is standing there like a house of cards, where the, the first time there, you know, someone comes and knocks on them that got an audit from some junior auditor that, that didn't ever do it before. And, you know, they had to get it out the door to get their token live or get their website live or the investors had something for them to do or whatever, whatever the reason is. Yeah, that's not how you build secure systems. How you build secure systems, you have multiple backups, you have redundancies, you have um, multiple audits, which takes time. That takes time because you have to think through the redundancies. How does the redundancy failover happen? How does this redundancy come into effect? All the audits uh, take time. Uh, because sometimes the audits discover some things and you want to discover those things before there's value on the system. And I completely understand, you know, people want to see progress. People want a feature. They want to go live. But if you really ask them, would you like us to rush it out and you'll take this security risk that you never heard of before? They always say no. The difference is that the other people who rush it out for them don't even know about that security risk. And so they don't even ask them and now they're sitting in this boat full of security risk together and they're oblivious to it. 
Okay, fine. That's your choice. You, you don't know why all the other things made by three developers who never built a secure system in their life don't take months to ship. That's the reason. They didn't do the audits. They don't have any backups. They never built a secure system. They're oblivious to the 15 things that could go wrong. By the way, they have nothing to lose because they have nothing. And so they might as well ship it, cross their fingers, and hope for the best. But that's not really how I uh, prefer to do things. I don't think it's the right way to build secure systems. Anyone who's built real secure systems can tell you that's a ridiculous way to approach building one. And we've been very lucky to be working with uh, the best academic researchers in security, the best security professionals, the best auditors since the very beginning of Chainlink. And that's why the system secures uh, tens of billions of value at rest, has secured over 100 billion at rest at some points reliably, has processed trillions of dollars in transaction value because we are not oblivious to these security problems. We are very aware of them and very worried about them. And we in the community are spending a lot of time on that. That someone has come to you and said, here's my free service that I slapped together in three months. I have no idea why all those security people over there are so worried. They're probably gonna delay the launch of the thing again because they're weird security people. They don't get what the world is. Uh, yeah, okay, maybe. M maybe that's the way to look at it. Or maybe the, the, the people that you're talking to who are telling you about how great their system is, who never built a single system securing or processing value, who don't even know the 15 problems that, that we explain to you and the community explains to you when you talk to them, Maybe you're just dealing with a lot of people that don't know how to make secure systems. Maybe that's what's happening. I think that's what's happening in many, many cases where I see someone ship some feature on some other thing. And uh, I don't think we're going to do that. Uh, I don't think it's a good move. I don't think it ends well. I don't think it goes in the right direction. And if it takes a little bit longer to build the real secure system that can handle real scalability and real value, that's what banks want to see. That's what asset managers want to see. And, uh, you know, to the best of our ability, we're going to try to do that. Uh, we're going to pay for audits. We're going to do reviews. We're going to try to make redundancies. We're going to try to do what we can do to make a more secure, reliable system so that the whole industry can have a secure, reliable infrastructure. And if other people want to do something else, that's their business. That's their choice. But this is the choice I think we will consistently try to make.